Good morning, church, and welcome to what I call my favorite, least favorite day of the year. This is the best, worst day of the year. It's a day that I love hating. It's a day that I hate loving. Uh, this is a day where we honor our seniors. We have nine graduating seniors in our class, uh, and I can't express to you how wonderful these people are. Uh, especially concerning the fact that they had to go through what they had to go through this year, uh, with much of their year being taken away from them, uh, much of their graduations being so different, even here meeting as we would on a normal Sunday morning to, to honor and surround them with prayer and to give their blessings from God and all this kind of stuff, but unfortunately uh, it's not working out that way. Uh, so I can't express to you how wonderful these nine graduating seniors are, and today's a day where we get to honor them. Uh, would you please join me in prayer before we start? Uh, Father God, we thank you so much for this day, uh, God, a day where we can think about the ways you've blessed so richly uh, this congregation with these seniors. Uh, God, I pray that this focus is all on you, especially through them. Uh, God, the future that's uncertain for many of them, the future that's uncertain for all of us, uh, but God, for them to go out boldly into the world, um, God, away from high school, away from everything that's past, and now walking forward, God, to become even more independent children of you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. To begin this morning, uh, I thought it'd be a special treat if we would actually be able to see some of the senior pictures from some of the parents of these kids. Uh, I want you to guess who this first pair is. Any guesses? Uh, a, no matter what, we need to bring that hairstyle back. Uh, this is Chris and Clay Cox, uh, the parents of Avery Cox. Uh, what a fantastic throwback that is, and I hope you're enjoying that, Avery, and showing that uh, how it should be. Uh, how about this one next up? Uh, a, this mustache absolutely has to come back. Uh, this is the one and only Dave Dales, father of Jace Dales, one of our graduating seniors. Uh, the next picture we have, uh, any guesses on this one? This is Anna Perrin, Ariel's mom. Uh, next up, how about this one? This one might be a little bit more tricky for you. Here we have Dave and Sarah Vogeltans, parents of Ellen Vogeltans. Uh, and then the final one right here might be one of my absolute favorites. Look at that hair, Jeff. Again, I start on the official petition, bring it back. But that's fantastic. And I love seeing these senior pictures of these parents uh, because you can almost sometimes see a lot of their kids in them. Uh, but let me make something very clear, too. We even have some who are adopted uh, graduating this year. But even in them, you see the way, they, the way they act, the way that they love, there's no doubt who their parents are. There's no doubt to whom they belong. So it's, it's, it's an awesome idea of seeing these seniors' parents back at their age. And I always wonder about the life that they led and things that they did and, and how they relate that to their kids because now their kids are stepping out all on their own. What an incredible gift it is to have parents. What an incredible gift it is to have someone, even if you don't have a mother or a father, but someone you can call your parents who love you and take care of you. So no matter what your case is now, as you're a graduating senior, understand that you have an entire world of love around you, especially here for you. Uh, there are a couple pictures that I still absolutely love showing. Uh, and this is more for the audience watching, not just the seniors, uh, but these pictures right here are the pictures of our seniors as babies. Uh, now, I wasn't here to see them in this state. I wasn't here that long ago. Um, in fact, many of you aren't able to ever have memories of them as babies, but their parents do. Seeing them as they were right over here. Can you imagine viewing these babies and understanding that the future they have set before them is going to be entirely different by the time they get to where they are now? But just in this case, they, they were just babies. Some of them had to worry about how much food they were eating. There's some cleaning that has to be done on one of those, by the way. I, I won't say which one. But I love seeing the, these kids as babies, just understanding that the kids we see now were once this small. And there is so much love that's still wrapped around them at every stage of their life, not just from parents or family, but by God. And then they grow up a little bit. In fact, the next section of pictures, uh, this is one of my most favorite stages when we get to see our graduating seniors. This, this awkward middle stage, I will say, Preston, bring that hair back. Another petition, please bring it back. Uh, just looking at, at how these kids look now in this kind of like awkward middle stage, but still understanding 
the entire blanket of love that's wrapped around each and every one of them. It's an incredible gift to have. And that's what God provides and God supplies for all of them. And that leads us all the way up to their senior pictures, how they are right now, how they look right now. The things they've gone through, the past has all led up to that picture and how they are right now. And it's incredible to think again, while we celebrate the lives of these seniors today, that no matter how they look, they have that continuous, incredible love from God. No matter how the world is turning out, they will always have God's love. No matter how the world is, is turning out, they will always have our love. No matter how the world is turning out, they will always have a home with their family here. We have incredible seniors. We can't forget that. Uh, what we do now is simply read the blessings that the parents have given to them. And because this is online, uh, we actually get to have some parents give it themselves. And you'll see clips and videos and audio of, of our parents blessing these graduating seniors. And it's an incredible moment because in these blessings, you will also find some of the most incredible challenges concerning the church. In reading these blessings, you'll see challenges that, that talk about how we should move on from here and how we should go on from here, not even just in the context of a senior graduating high school, but in a Christian living their lives. So this first one goes to you, Nathan Bowen, graduating senior. This is for you. Nathan, when we found out that we were having a son, your mom wanted a name that had a strong meaning for you. Your name, Nathan, means a gift from God and you were an answered prayer. One of the other reasons that I picked your name is that I wanted you to be a leader, someone who would speak the truth. You were named after Nathan the prophet who used his words to speak the truth to King David. You can talk and tell the truth even when your truthfulness has challenged us as parents along the way. You have an inner strength and beliefs about fairness and acceptances. You have always been determined and at times stubborn. Along with your humor and intelligence, we have seen you become more confident in yourself. We watched you grow into a strong-willed young man through your years in high school and the NJROTC. Your love of being there for your family and friends. We watched you grow over the years of a young camper to becoming a counselor at NYC. Nathan, continue to challenge your perspective on life. Don't be afraid to continue to stand up for your beliefs and convictions. We're excited to watch and see as you go into the next chapter of your life. As your mom and I see much of me in you, that I push you to excel because I'm proud of you. I know that you will have a great future. I've tried to motivate you to push yourself because you will influence many people throughout your life. As your dad, I've watched you grow into a young man. I'm very proud of the young man that you are becoming. Remember that going forward and continue to do this. You've taught your mother and I many things over your life and we hope that you continue to keep helping to teach people as you move into the next chapter of your life. Your mother and I encourage you to continue loving God. Have the inner strength to experience life. Live it to the fullest. Love deeply, but don't forget your roots. Remember the choices you make today will influence the options you have tomorrow. So continue to choose wisely. Keep working on being the best person that you can be. Remember that life is tough and sometimes unfair, but you will survive. We love you and we're very proud of you, Nathan Bowen. Love mom and dad. That's for you. But for the church, I say the same kind of things here. Continue to challenge your perspective on life. Continue to stand up for what's right and what's good. Continue to be the kind of person that's going to affect many people. That is a direct challenge to you, to Christians, to me. What a blessing. Avery Cox, this is for you. A graduation blessing with credits to Barbara D. McAdam. Embarking on a journey which began so long ago, how could you have imagined all the things you'd come to know? You learned to use each challenge as an opportunity to overcome each problem despite adversity. It wasn't always easy keeping up with what was cool, but you held on tight to your beliefs and followed the golden rule. You found your voice and chose a path that honors who you are. And that, we think, may be your greatest lesson learned so far. For no one could be prouder of the person you've become, and that is why we're confident that the best is yet to come. May you never waste a moment wishing life was a bit more fair. Rather, use the gifts God gave you to change the world out there. Your graduation signals us that you are on your way. So spread your wings and fly, my dear, forever and a day. We love you to the moon and back. Love, Mom and Dad. 
P.S. But fly back home often. Avery, that's for you. In the church, I say the same kind of things. Not wishing that everything out there was more fair, but understanding we have the power to change things that aren't fair. We can go out with God and understand that the world can look so differently than it does right now. Not just for seniors, but for us. What a blessing. The next is for Jace Dales. And Jace, this one's for you. Congratulations for graduating high school. We're so proud of you. We've been so excited to see all your accomplishments in high school from being in the plays and in the musicals to eventually co-directing and then directing them from being on the top group and chorus to being on the leadership team in the National Honor Society. We've been so proud and so excited to watch all the things that you've accomplished in high school. Uh, but most importantly, we're looking forward to seeing all the experiences that you're going to have at Oklahoma Christian. All the friends that you're going to make, all the challenges that you're going to step up to, um, all the ways that you're going to find out the potential that you have inside that you're going to discover while you're in college. We're proud of you, we're excited for you, and never forget how much I love you and how honored I am that God's blessed me to be your dad. So get ready, daughter. You're going to have a great experience in college. And OC, look out. Here she comes. Again, what a blessing. The next goes to Angel Delgado. Angel, your dad and I are very proud of what you've accomplished. There were many times you had to jump hurdles that others did not to finish the same race. You could have quit, you, you didn't. You've shown perseverance and lots of personal growth and should be proud of yourself. You've shown the siblings coming behind you that it's possible to push through hard things and worth it. As you move into the next chapter of your life, I have two verses I would like to share with you. Ephesians 2:10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. In Micah 6, 8, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. I pray that you pursue opportunities to do the good works that God prepared for you to do, I pray that you are treated justly with mercy and that you act justly with mercy and walk humbly. Fight for those that need justice and mercy. Use your gifts to be Jesus to those around you. Keep pressing on. Those that love you are all around you. Much love, Mom and Dad. Now, Angel, that's for you. And to the church, where do we even start? To act justly, to walk humbly, to love Mercy, in a world where that seems very, very, very nil right now, it is a perfect time to take this blessing as a challenge to all of us. What a blessing. Next, to Sam and Noah, twins. Uh, this one is for you. <laughs> okay. Are we going to do this? Okay, let's do it. Oh, you already started recording. Of course I did. <laughs> oh my goodness. Of course you did. All right. Sam and Noah, you have grown up at Southwest and each year we've been here for Senior Sunday and I have wondered what we would say and whether we could say it without crying. I had great intentions of writing you each a letter every year for your scrapbooks. Well, we know how that turned out. So now I'm tasked with trying to say it all in one letter as you graduate from high school. There are so many things we would like to say, so many funny memories we could share, but I think the bottom line of it all is best said in a song by Sidewalk Prophets entitled, These Are the Words I Would Say. The song says, be strong in the Lord and never give up hope. You're going to do great things, I already know. God's got his hand on you, so don't live life in fear. Forgive and forget but don't forget why you're here. Take your time and pray. Thank God for each day. His love will find a way. From the amazing things that God did during my pregnancy with you just to get you here, until now, we know God has a great plan for you. You also have a church family who loves you very much and will always be there for you. Never forget who you are, whose you are, and that you always have a home, and you are loved beyond measure. We love you both very much. 
Sam and Noah, I also echo your mother's thoughts and her encouragement to never forget to the love we have for you, where you come from, whom you, whom you belong to, and the hope you have in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As this chapter of your life comes to an end, an exciting, better chapter is just beginning. I know a lot of fear and uncertainty has erupted in the world today, but know that this too shall pass. You have experienced adversity before, and better, happier times always come to those who persevere. The deck was stacked against you as you both came into this world, and it didn't seem likely that you would be even born, or if you were, not long for this world. But faith, hope, and love prevailed, and the Lord blessed us with you. He blessed us with smart, clever, handsome, brave boys, with hearts full of love and compassion. And for the past 19 years, he has faithfully provided for our family with the means to raise you in a good home, give you a good education, surround you with loving family and a loving church that loves you and has watched you grow and mature into the fine young men you've become. This year was to be the crowning achievement in this short chapter of your life. It held all the promise and expectations to celebrate all the hard work and achievement that you put forth to graduate high school. But unfortunately, like a thief in the night, it was all snatched away from you because of a global pandemic. Naturally, many are gonna focus upon what's been lost and all the ways our lives have changed for the worse. And with any loss, we must mourn and grieve for to not do so dishonors the people and the things that we've lost. But know this, when bad things happen, just as David wept and grieved before the Lord at the death of his son, we must also take off the sackcloth and ashes and remember whose we are and whom we belong to. This is the encouragement that I give to each of you. Remember the lessons of the past to find the promise of the future. Remember last year when we stood on the beaches in Normandy and we remembered the brave young men, many the exact same age as you, that fought the good fight for our freedom? Remember the veterans that you talked to, who by the grace of God persevered and went on to build lives and families and have a great positive impact on this world. Just as you are standing today on your own beach, looking forward at an unseemingly insurmountable challenges this life will bring, know that you're not alone. With faith, hope, and love of your Father in heaven, you will overcome. Put your trust in Him and move forward knowing that you are always in the palm of God's hand. You've been there before, and you always will be. You know the value of hard work and determination. Don't ever forget that. It's gotten you this far. But also remember that help is always available to those who are not too proud to ask for it. And always remember to give credit to where it belongs, the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so proud of you, boys, Proud of your accomplishments and so excited to see how you are going to change the world for the better. You both have my blessing and the blessings of the Lord. Don't forget that. Hold fast to his word and remember these comforting words that Jesus left with his disciples in John 14. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let it be fearful. That same spirit lives within you, Sam and Noah, and will teach you so much more than your mother and I ever could. We love you. Congratulations. We love you. Congrats. The next blessing goes to Ariel Perrin. Dear Ariel, wow. What a ride. It has been a joy getting to watch you transform from a goofy kindergartner to a goofy graduate. Just kidding, Ariel. You've grown in so many ways over the last several years. We've enjoyed getting to watch you pour yourself into those around you and live out your love for the Lord. Your fun-loving, people-loving, God-loving spirit will lead you on so many adventures. We are excited to see the paths the Lord lays out for you over the next four years. Thank you for your love, your laughs, and your servant spirit. We love you, dad and mom. That's for you. Again, what a blessing. Next we go to Preston Smith. Uh, this one is for you. 
In life, there are always choices. In elementary school, it was, which color shall I choose? In middle school, it was, which friend should I be with? In high school, it was, what courses will I take? Now that you have successfully completed high school, Preston, and you reflect on the past, the path you have taken, and look to the future, the path you will choose, just remember that you are not alone. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. And when faced with life's choices, it is also important to remember not only who you are and who you've become, but whose you are, a child of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, 5, and 10 says, But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, for which God prepared in advance for us to do. Preston, we love you and pray that your paths be straight as you submit to the God who created you and pours out his grace upon you, because he loves you. And again, what a blessing. And finally, we move to Ellen Vogeltanz. This is for you. Dear Ellen, we are so thankful that God placed you in our home and in our life. Words can express how proud we are of you and all that you have accomplished during your school years. Homeschooling you and your sister has been one of our greatest joys. We would not trade a moment of that time that God has given us with you. We have seen the Lord working in your life and growing you as you have persevered through challenges and speech and debate and teen pact. When you didn't achieve your goal, you kept pressing on and did not give up. You serve your family in so many ways, especially baking and cleaning. As you enter this next phase of your life, we pray that you will always remember that your faith in the Lord is the most important foundation you have. It will carry you as you walk through difficult times as well as the good times. Continue to see God and his will for your life as you walk forward. We love you. We're reminded of one of your favorite passages, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. Love, dad and mom, and Hannah too. That's for you. In fact, there's actually a bonus one you get. This is for you. Congratulations, Ellen. I'm so excited for you. You have been an amazing sister to me. Um, and... I'm so thankful for you in all the many ways you make me laugh and have fun. Um, I'm thankful for all, all of the memories we have together, from playing together when we were little, when you'd always ask me to come and play, um, and all the school activities we did together, um, and the fun we have now doing things and like watching movies together. I admire your strong faith in God and the many gifts he's given you. Um, you have worked so diligently in so many different areas, um, whether it's school or leadership activities or um, just having fun. Um, I pray that you'll continue to do that um, with whatever God has next for you. And I pray that you'll continue to do, um, as the, the verse in Matthew says, to shine your light so that Others may um, see your good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Um, love you. Again, what a blessing. So that's, that's for you, but for the church, I echo what they wrote. Especially in understanding the grace of God being sufficient, no matter what happens in our weaknesses or in our failures, God is still perfect and loving, and that grace is more than enough for what we need. What a blessing. 
I now get to give you my blessing. See, I'm the youth minister here, and, and this is one of the first groups that I had my entire career here, where they experienced more of me than, than another minister they've had before. So that's a lot of pressure to have, by the way, understanding how the youth ministry worked before me with the great Franklin Wood, but this is where this group really had to attach to me. And I have so many memories with all these seniors that I can't express to you how wonderful they are. Uh, in fact, last year, Angel Delgado, one of our graduating seniors, uh, told me in class the morning before Senior Sunday, and he said, if, if you cry, you owe me 10 bucks. And I said, we'll see. Uh, so I, I presented Senior Sunday, I went back to my seat back here, and then I got a tap on the shoulder, and Angel passed a note through the youth group up to me. I opened it and said, I expect it in all ones up front, signed Angel. Uh, I'm still contesting that, by the way. I got misty, I didn't cry, but that's not the point. Uh, I have these memories of these kids that it is just so surreal to think that now they're stepping out on their own to go to a whole different world. Uh, but I want to go back to the thought at the beginning where I said how even their parents, whether biological or not, they leave imprints and, and these kids look like their parents. And that's the same kind of thing we have with God and his son. Jesus looking just like God. When he's being transfigured in the amazing story we have, he looks like he's not supposed to on earth, but how he is in heaven. And we see that God is imprinted on him. And he is the version of God that we can see and understand. So just like parents have an imprint on their kids, whether in action or in looks, God has an imprint on his son. And it's an incredible gift to have. So the challenge I give to you graduating seniors, and not only but the rest of the church, is who are we choosing to look like? How are we choosing to act when we step out into the world? And to do that, we'll look into the book of Ephesians chapter 4. In this, Paul is talking to, to this church about how to live as children of light and the things to do and how to act and how to be. And he starts with this in verse 17. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. And he goes on to talk about how they shouldn't live in these negative ways that some people are living, but instead to live in the way that God wants them to live. Picking up in verse 20. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness, to put off the old self and look like God the new creation, the new thing that he's promised you to look like God, especially in a world that needs it the most right now. That's your challenge, to look like your father. He keeps on saying how to live and how to react and how to do things right, and not letting unawesome talk come out, not letting deceit or lying or, or all that kind of stuff, and he finishes with this. In verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. To look like your father. To go out in a world that now is so crazy with so many things happening around us that you have to face now. But to look like God doing it, that's going to change everything. So as you graduate high school, understand that uh, by this time and in many, many years from now, if you have kids and, and you get to see them grow up and see them how they look like you, whether in action or in appearance, no matter what case it is, and we're going to show your senior pictures from here and look back on the hairstyles and, and the clothes and the mustaches and all that kind of stuff. Understand, God has been consistent with you since day one. From the, from the pictures of you as a baby to the middle school, awkward pictures to your senior picture now, God has consistently called you his own. That's your challenge to remember. Moving on from high school to the world in front of you that needs you more than ever to look like your father. Don't forget the amazing blessing we have at Southwest as your family. We love you and we will miss you. And I'm trying to hold it together at the very end. Uh, I won't owe Angel 10 bucks. I'm going to fight that as much as I can. 
Uh, but no matter the case, understand, as, as you graduate high school, you never graduate from the love of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. I got these incredible seniors. Uh, the way they stepped up and they have led by example and God, how they look like you. Uh, Father, I pray in this world, though, they will face a lot of difficulties and troubles. Uh, God, they can remember how much love they have uh, from their parents, uh, from their family, from Southwest, but most importantly, from you. Father, I thank you for the gift we have to be together. Uh, even though we can't be together, uh, God, the bond we have as, as a family here to, to support these wonderful kids as they go on to the next thing. Uh, Father, give us peace and strength, uh, especially in the, in the world right now as it looks so crazy, but we know that in the future, uh, and even now, uh, God, these kids can change the world. Jesus, let me pray. Amen.